Today, I am going to be showing you how to submit cards to PSA for grading so you can turn cards like these into cards like these. Let's get it. So I decided I want to do something a little different with you guys for this Friday video and let me know in the comments if you guys like this video. So I am sending a Pokemon submission to PSA before the end of the month because there's a $15 per card submission deal going on right now. And I have 20 cards. Got some Wash Rotom, you know, Lucario, some old stuff, Leafeon, Cynthia, a lot of good stuff I'm sending to PSA. 20 cards total. And um, yeah, I just want to walk through how to send stuff to PSA the easiest and most efficient way so everybody can understand. So before we get to the computer part, I want to show you guys how to package a card up to send to PSA. I'll do another video to like what to look for for a better grade, but for this video alone, I'll teach you like what to put it in. So you put it in a penny sleeve, you, well, you put the card in the penny sleeve, and then you get a card saver one or two for Pokemon cards and most thin sports cards. I prefer card saver ones because they fit better. So you get, a, you get card saver ones, you put the card in the card saver, and then I usually team bag them up so no dust gets into the uh, card saver. You guys don't have to do that, that's optional, but I do it just to make the card more protected. And yeah, I do it with every single card to ship it out. But yeah, let's get right online and show you guys how to submit each of these cards. The first step is to have a computer with a printer because you're gonna need to print stuff from PSA, unless if you have a phone that can print to a printer. And now we get on the computer. Step one is now completed. Okay, so first things first, we have to go to PSA.com. Whoa, shh. That's not PSA.com. PSA. We'll, put, we'll type in PSA so it's easier. Type in PSA. Um, PSACard.com. Go to the homepage. And then you sign in. If you don't have an account, should I make an account for you guys? You know what? I'm going to do that. Okay, you're on the PSA screen. You type account. And if you don't have an account, let's make one real quick. Let's make one together to walk you through it. So I'll make a I'll make a Cranes Collectibles account real quick. First name Jordan. Last name Crane. Cranes Collectibles. We'll type a password in real quick. Okay. We'll make an account real quick. Verify. Let me verify it real quick. All right. As soon as you verified it, it just let you have access to everything. So first things first, we go over to services. We go to Trading card grading, you tap on that, and then you scroll down and it gives you different submission types, grading, crossover, review, reholder. If you wanna get a card graded from scratch, you do grading. Oh, that's just learn more. Ready to submit your card, that pops up, you do start submission. Uh, build your card submission and it tells you turnaround times for everything, you start, boom. Start new submission. And there's a whole bunch of different ones. You got Funko Pops, which is like action figures. You got tickets, packs, coins, blah, 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 blah. We want the regular or small size cards that are memorabilia autos. If it's just a normal card from a pack, it's usually the first one. Tap on that. Submission type, grading, reveal, reveal. Grading, review, crossover, reholder. Um, if you're grading a card from Raw, you go grading. Review would be, I think, I don't know what review is. Crossover is like if you have a Beckett slab and then reholder is if like your sl slab's cracked and you want to rehold it. So you go grading. And for ours, it's no autograph authentication. Usually cards from right from boxes, you do this one. Unless if you want to grade your, like get an auto on your grade and stuff. But this one is the usual one to go to. And you go next. And here's the pricing for everything. And I decided to do this now because for Pokemon right now, uh, there's a $15 pricing limit or $15 per card. So I want to get that done now and max declared value per item. If you guys don't know what this is, mine right now is for 200. After your card is graded, you can't have a card that's over $200 after the card is graded. I don't know why they do this because we don't know what our card grade is going to be, but you just have to guesstimate. And if your card's over $200 after grading, they'll just upcharge you. But if it's like two, like $300, like two to $300, they don't usually upcharge you. They just let it go. But yeah, so you can't send a Pokemon card that's 
gonna be like three thousand dollars after graded through the bulk but we're doing bulk and we'll do next okay now this is where it could get confusing for some so this is where you submit every single one of your cards so quantity or quality qual no quantity one description and then you got to type in the description of the card and the declared value total after it gets graded so you just got to guesstimate what your card is going to be worth after you get it graded so for example i'll show you guys the first card i have is a wash rotom it's a pre-release from ultra prism and let me think about this and see what i gotta type in for this okay so i typed in for Pokemon, sports is a lot easier, but for Pokemon, there's so much different, like, reverse ho hollows and stuff. But Wash Rotom, I typed in the name, Ultra Prism, which is the set it's in, and then 94, this um, card number is 94 in the bottom left corner, and this is a pre-release one, and there's two of them. You got pre-release staff and then pre-release. This one doesn't have the staff stamp, so it's pre-release. And then I'm not sure if this will get a 10, so I'm just going to say you can you can kind of you can BS for the declared value total. Just if it's under 200, it's fine. The reason why they want you to have that is for insurance purposes. So when you ship cards and they ship them back, they have an idea what to insure the package for. So I'm going to write 50 and then you just click save. Boom, done. So let me put all of these in I got 20 cards I'll just fast forward I gotta put all these in real quick and if there's something that you guys that I think you guys should know I'll pause it and let you guys know also for example I have two of these Lucario Ultra Prisms uh, pre-release and in the is it quantity yeah in the quantity tab you can put one two whatever um, usually I just do them two separate. I don't put two. I just do separate ones. So I just do them twice. You can, you guys can do whatever you want, but I just do twice just in case. By the way, sometimes it's a pain in the absolute butt to find your card. Like for example, I just had to type in this. I had to type in Ultra Prism. I thought Heat Rain SM96 would just work, but I had to type in Ultra Prism and everything just to find it. It's, it's odd. So for this Solgaleo uh, Ultra Prism card, I couldn't find it. When I type this in, wait, will it show? Yeah, when I type this in, it only shows Italian for the 89 and this is English. So if you guys can't find your card, sports guys, it'll be a bigger of a deal because there's a lot of pop one like uh, varieties like ice and stuff. So what I usually do is I go to Beckett and I find it like how they have it and then I copy it and then sometimes I'll go to, I'll type it in an eBay for an example. I'll show ya. Sometimes I type it in eBay to see if they have any slabs of it. And they don't they have okay they have this one which is the same thing as mine but a different guy and they just have the hollow near mint eight blah 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 so what i usually do is just copy and paste what beckett says into psa and if it doesn't show up as something you can click just enter it anyways and they usually figure it out and make the correct slab look how cool this leafeon is i wish you guys can see a better angle this thing is so clean nice full art from ultra prism Smash or pass? Smash. This RCS Gold, if it hits a 10, it'll be over $200, but just put the, uh, like I have, declared value right here. Just put it at 199, and if they upcharge it, they upcharge it. It's only gonna be a couple dollars, and usually they don't if it's like a $250 card, so that's what I do. Chunky boy. This car is an absolute banger. Gold Mewtwo. So once you're done putting them into the system, make sure that every single one has the right label for each of them because if the label is wrong, it's going to give a greater hard time, which they'll give you worse grades because you're going to get pissed off. 
So that's a secret, don't tell anybody, but the less hassle you give the grader by like making everything perfect, in order, everything, the more tens you're gonna get because you're gonna be in a better mood because they don't have to deal with a whole bunch of BS, you know? So I just checked and everything is good. 20 cards, which is right, $15. It's gonna be $300 uh, to ship these roughly, or to get them graded roughly. And after you're done, you just make sure that everything's good. You always gotta double check to make sure everything's good. All right, now you push next. So for shipping and billing, you can get them shipped to a vault, which will store your cards for you. But that's not cool because you don't get to see the cards in your hand. So obviously ship back to me, shipping costs apply. It's gonna be about $340 because it's insured for $40. That's where your declared value comes in. Because I mean, if there was more expensive cards in here, that number would be up. So about $340, blah, 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 blah. Um, let me put in my credit card number real quick. One thing before I put my credit card in, they don't charge you until they ship their, your cards back to you. So if you don't have the funds right now to get them graded, you could still send this out, put your credit card number in, but it's not until they get them graded and send them back to you is when your card gets charged. Okay, once you put all your information in, uh, return shipping method, I usually just do insured shipping and now you push next. Okay, now it's just confirmation, you know, got your return shipping, your billing information, how many cards you get graded in all your cards and your grand value. So, I mean, I'm spending about $340 to get all these slabbed up and I'm gonna roughly have about $1,500 after this is all said and done, if I get the grades I want. Everybody wants tens, obviously, but now you do, you know, you read terms and conditions, just read them all like this. I read it, blah, 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 blah. You push next. And now your submission gets put down here for the recent submissions, you push your number. And now you have all of this. It tells you how to send the package out, how to package it, you agree, you gotta print stuff, blah, 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 blah. You guys don't really, you guys obviously should read it, but I'm gonna take you step by step of how to do this perfectly. So you gotta print all of this out. And now you let it print. Oh! Terrific! Before we get finished with the computer part, I forgot, after you print everything out and you guys, you know, messed up and you need to make a change because you messed a card up or you want to add something, on your online uh, center, your online submission center dashboard at the bottom, you can push make changes and then you can change it. I don't want to, actually, I'll just push it for you guys. Warning, yeah. So you can edit it if you want to right there, boom. Okay, now we're gonna go right through this. So regular cards, this is your first copy. Form not valid, there's an expiration date. So I have all the way until April 29th to ship this out. Blah, 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 your submission barcode. This is for them. Um, package information, customer must provide. Total number of orders included in this package. That is how many different people in your, are in your submission. So it's just me, so I just put one. It's one. And then total number of collectibles included in the package and all orders combined. Like how many cards are you sending out? I'm sending 20. So if you have like a, if you're doing like a group submission with like five people on it, you put five and then all the stuff. Now it's got every single one of your cards that you're getting graded for the first page. I don't know why that was on top or why this is the second page. I'll talk about that after. You got everything here. And usually it says, I have read blah, 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 blah. It tells you like terms and conditions. I usually just, you know, throw my SIG right there. Here's another one. This is your second copy. You do the same thing, you know, you put one, 20 collectibles, you go to the next page, and then this is theirs again, it's the last page. The customer copy, you keep it for your records. So now that's all said and done. This is a label that you gotta put outside your package so PSA knows what um, submission it is. So you cut this out right here and then you put it on the side of your box that you're shipping with. For a 20 card submission, or around that area for cards, I like to use the medium flat rate boxes because they're just enough. They're not too big and not too small so I can fit my cards and put packing stuff in there and keep them safe. Let me build this box real quick. So now what I like to do is layer the bottom with bubble wrap and then I layer the sides with bubble wrap. You can use like um, garbage bags. You could just use anything. Just make sure when you put the cards in here, they don't move around and get damaged. So after I got that box almost ready, I get two pieces of cardboard. I cut them out a little bigger than the, uh, the, the cards like that. So you can protect them. You don't want to do it too small because it won't protect those, but you don't want to do it too big because it won't fit in the box. So you get these two pieces, you get two pieces, you cut them out and then you put these cards 
in here and then you put another piece on top. Make sure though that these cards are in order to what's on the paper. Now here comes a tricky part. Usually I just use painter's tape and go around just the four like that and I'll protect them. But PSA says I gotta use, or we gotta use rubber bands. And you rather should do what PSA says than to go your own route because it might piss them off. So let me rubber band these real quick. I, I gotta use two hands. So this is what it will look like. And the problem I hate about rubber bands is like, these rubber bands are really strong. So it's really like compacting the cards, which I don't like it. Also, if you have 20 cards like I do, they slip out and they shoot out the sides and um, they get all out of order. So this is what I hate about rubber bands, but gotta do what PSA says. So this is what it should look like. So now I'm gonna cover this up. I put it in the box and now I'm gonna cover up a bubble wrap. So I used a garbage bag or like a um, grocery bag, just some random like uh, paper and stuff. And just, you know, just make, you can use all this stuff. Just make sure it's secure and it won't move when it's shipping. And now you take your four pages, the two uh, copies that PSA needs. I typically fold them up once like this and I just put them right there like that. And now you close your package up and tape it. Write fragile on every side of the box to make sure that the uh, mail carrier doesn't throw it around like a rag doll as well. That's a big tip. And now you take this little thing and cut it out and put it on top of your box. I'll show you where I usually put it. I put my barcode right there, right to the right of my label. I'll show you what I do for labels. Right to the right of my label and make sure, this is important, you don't put tape over that barcode. You put it around the barcode because they won't be able to scan it. Also, if you need the address, you just type right on your submission number right here on PSA. You push on your submission number and then you scroll down and it should be right here. So I use USPS and there's FedEx. So I'm gonna have to use that address right there. And I uh, ship my labels out with Pirate Ship because it's cheaper, but you can also go to your local USPS and have them ship it for you. I always put insurance on my PSA packages just in case it doesn't get lost. It's an extra $5.60, why not, you know? This is what the final product looks like, and now I can take it to my local post office for them to ship it out. So that'll do it on the PSA tutorial video, and in the comments, let me know how I did. Like, is it easy to follow? And if I should do more tutorial videos in the future. I hope you guys enjoyed. Deuces.